right, welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Joy Lim Nakrin in for Julie Grant this afternoon, and we're tracking the latest in Ohio. We're just moments away from hearing the verdict in the phony funeral home, home trial where a former pastor will soon learn his fate. Defendant Shante Hardin is accused of misrepresenting himself as a funeral director, operating without a license, abuse of corpses, theft, intimidation, and much more. It all started with a gruesome discovery, which led authorities to find cremated remains in his Akron, Ohio church back in 2017. Now, during trial, Hardin took the stand as he told the judge that he never meant to deceive anyone. He only meant to help grieving families who could not afford traditional funeral services, he argued. Hardin opted for a bench trial, meaning the judge will be the sole decision maker in this case. Now, he's tasked with weighing over 40 of these counts against the former pastor. On Monday, the judge announced that he reached a verdict and he would announce the decision at any moment. With each felony carrying a maximum of 36 months in prison, Hardin could see himself behind bars for many years to come. So, uh, of course, we're keeping our eyes in that courtroom and the verdict now being read. The court has heard and considered all the testimony and evidence uh, in this case and renders the following. I'm going to try to do this with the help of the visual aid to my right. There's nothing. And I have these counts grouped, uh, not numerically, but based upon their relationship to each other. So we'll begin with counts 20 and 23. They were dismissed uh, before trial upon defendant's motion by the court's order, which was dated on July 7th, 2022. Next, the state of Ohio dismissed counts 9, 31, and 32 uh, at trial. Next, the court dismissed count 11 upon defendant's motion for acquittal under Rule 29 at the close of the state's case in chief, finding as a matter of law that cremated remains do not constitute a human corpse under Revised Code 2927.01. With reference to the counts in case 2967 involving Asia Lucky, the court finds defendant not guilty of intimidation, count four, as the witness stated, she did not know what defendant was talking about in reference to the statement, watch your back, which could be a threat, but could also advise to be careful. As to count five, defendant is found not guilty. As to count six, defendant is found guilty for purposely sticking the witness with the rental charges he caused her to incur. Moving on to the related charges involving Penske rental vehicles, the court finds defendant guilty of grand theft in count 29 for not paying the nearly $12,000 in fees owed and not guilty of count 30. Regarding counts 33, 34, and 35, the evidence is clear that defendant failed to file the requisite tax return for himself and his various entities his claimed lack of knowledge of this obligation is not credible. Defendant is found guilty on each of these counts. In counts 21, 26, 27, and 28, defendant is charged with passing bad checks. The evidence of guilt on each of these charges is patent and not credibly refutable. Defendant is found guilty of these charges. Defendant faces three counts of tampering with records in counts two, three, and 24. The court finds defendant utilized deception to obtain the benefit achieved by using the EDRS system as charged in counts two and three and finds defendant guilty. And in count 24, the court finds defendant guilty as well. Likewise, defendant is found guilty of counts four and five by using a telecommunications device with a scheme to defraud. In counts six and seven, defendant is charged with identity fraud for using Dr. Hussein's personal information without his consent. The court finds defendant not guilty of these charges given the weight and credibility it assigned to Dr. Hussein's testimony in this regard. The court finds defendant guilty of count eight a funeral home under 471701 
is a fixed place for the care, preparation for burial, or disposition of dead human bodies, or the conducting of funerals. Defendant used the RISE storage facility in such a way without a license. Next, there are several charges of defendant representing himself as a funeral director while unlicensed under revised code 471713. Under the code, funeral directing means the business or profession of directing or supervising funerals for profit from one or more funeral homes, licensed under this chapter, the arrangement or sale of funeral services, the filling out or execution of a funeral service contract, the business or profession of preparing dead human bodies for burial by means other than embalming, the disposition of dead human bodies, the provision or maintenance of a place for the preparation, the care, or disposition of dead human bodies, the use in connection with the business of the term funeral director, undertaker, mortician, or any other term from which it can be implied the business of funeral <coughs> directing, or the holding out to the public that one is a funeral director or a disposer of dead human bodies. Defendant's various attempts to shield himself from criminal liability by his use of various LLCs and trade names, as well as his signature in various instances, followed by words such as agent or logistics coordinator do not avail. The statute does not look to what you call yourself or what disclaimers or other subterfuge you might try to use. If you engage in the conduct defined by statute, you are a funeral director. And each of the following counts, defendant did it for profit without a license. Defendant is found guilty of counts 12, 16, 18, 22, 25, 1, 2, and 7. Next, gross abuse of a corpse is defined by statute as follows. A de treating a human corpse in a way that would outrage reasonable community sensibilities without legal authorization. Ohio case law is clear that such a standard is not only constitutional, but also understood by persons of common intelligence and requires a mens rea of at least recklessness. The court has surveyed both Ohio case law and scholarly treatises to inform its verdicts in these related counts. What it comes down to is that a human corpse is to be treated with dignity and respect. When a corpse is mistreated in a way that is indecent or that would risk creating a health hazard, or is outside the normal and accepted means of handling, or when the person with custody of the body acts deceptively or exploitatively, the community is rightly outraged and the statute is, is thus violated. In count 10, defendant is found guilty. In count 14, defendant is found guilty. In count 15, defendant is found guilty. In count 17, regarding the body of Tyrone Heron, the court cannot find beyond a reasonable doubt from the evidence adduced at trial that the decedent's corpse was abused as defined by statute. Defendant is found not guilty of that charge. In count 19, Deborah Morton testified as to the overwhelming stench of decomposition noted when Garrison Rogers was presented for burial. However, the evidence is missing as to what the defendant did to so mistreat the body. It was noted that it could not be determined how long the body had sat before it was discovered, but the evidence suggests more than a week. Defendant is found not guilty. In count 36, defendant is found guilty. In count 37, defendant is found guilty. And finally, in count three, defendant is found guilty. In count one, defendant is charged with engaging in a pattern of corrupt activity. The ev evidence demonstrates to the court beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty. Finally, we have count 13, criminal tools. Defendant is found guilty. Now, the court would suggest a sentencing date of August 26th at 9 a.m. Counsel? It's good for the state, Your Honor. One moment, Your Honor. Is it 26th? Uh, yes, uh, Friday, August 26th at 9 a.m. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Now, if counsel would like to file a sentencing memorandum, 
Uh, it will be due by Friday, August 19th, two weeks from today. If either side wants to file a response to the other's sentencing memorandum, that will be due by close of business on August 24th, 2022. So I have everything I need to go forward with sentencing. I was here for the whole trial, as you know, it was tried to the bench, so there's no need for the court, in my estimation, to get a pre-sentence investigation. Now, uh, Mr. Wood, Mr. Tamaro, will the state uh, ensure that notice is provided pursuant to Marcy's law to all the victims of the date and time of sentencing and the right to make an impact statement, either in writing or in person? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Anything else before we uh, adjourn for today? Not from the state, Your Honor. Not from me.